Good day, everyone. Today, I'm going to be showing us how to conditionally format an Excel or a CSV file in Outrix. I am Fagwa Mugui Kendi, and I am a data scientist at Syndrome. All right, so there are basically two tools you're going to be using in Outrix, and they are part of the reporting tools. The first is the table tool, and the second tool we're going to be looking at is the render tool. So without Taking much of our time, uh, let's jump straight to Altrix. All right. So this is Altrix interface and um, how to conditionally format an Excel file. So I'm just going to import an Excel file. And to do that, I'm going to drag the input data tool to my work area. And then I'm just going to be dragging um, an Excel file I have on my laptop. All right. So um, that's just what I'm going to be doing. Okay, so you come to file because I want to have the file in my uh, local directory and then you click on select file. So I'm going to be navigating straight to where my file is on my laptop. For me, it's in documents and Syndro. Then I'm going to go to Syndro training and I'm going to be using sample superstar data. And for people who understand how to use um, you know, the W sample superstore data must be familiar, all right? So I'm going to be picking the other sheets in the Excel file. So it's very important to pick a particular sheet, all right? So and I'm going to be clicking on OK. So to see if this is a preview of my Excel file, so we can see uh, I have the role ID, the mother priority discount, column, the unit price, shipping cost, and the likes. So to just see that in my results area, I'm going to connect it to a browse tool. I'm going to click on this and then run it. Okay, so, all right. So this is what I have, right? So um, to reduce our time we use in processing this data, I'm going to just bring few number of records in here. So I'm just going to reduce this to, let's say, 10 number of records. So the record limit is going to be 10. So for here, we have about 9,426 records. You can see that's what has been, that's what is in this file. So I just want to reduce it to 10 to reduce my runtime. And then I'm going to run. So reducing the of execution, and I'm going to run this. And you can see we have just 10 out of the uh, 9,000 plus records. All right, so basically, how do I conditionally format my Excel file? Now, imagine I want to format, or I want to, uh, let's use the city column, for example. Imagine I want to uh, format this column where um, probably I see something like anacotis, right? So I'm just going to come and go to my reporting tab, right? And then click on table. So I'm going to put it in between this and then I'm going to have a row rule or a column rule. So the first thing I want to do is conditionally formatting my column that if from here, you can see if the um, we chose the okay the city. If the city name is Anacortes. Then I want it to be probably this color. I want it to be this font and the like. So we're going to be seeing uh, some basic uh, formatting properties as we move along. So um, this this is what we want to do. So we're saying if city is what is uh, equal to Anna. Cut is all right. So I'm um, just going to go to the table. So it brings out the configuration for the table two. All right. So the basic table two. All right. So here you can actually group by, um, but we will not be doing that today. To group by, it's actually pretty easy if you want to group by a particular field. All right. So what we what we're going to be focusing on is this region. So you can name rename your file. You can increase the width. You can relatively um, adjust or format 
your width, right? Uh, but what I want to show right now is how to conditionally format a column. So for example, if I want to change uh, the format of the city column when we have a particular value. So you can see city, and I can rename this to maybe my new city. So um, that's just about that. So, so let's just try that. So I'm going to say my new city. So creating a custom row, right? So you can see we want to change a particular um, column, which is the city column, right? And we want to conditionally format it. So we're going to create a column row to do that. All right, so column row. Now, this is the row name. So let's see city row. Very important to rename your row so you can understand what exactly you're trying to do. So what do I want to do? I want to rename and I want to conditionally format my column when the city is an is right? So I'm just going to say when, then the uh, you can just select the column name. So city, so we're going to look for a uh, city. So you can see city here. And when city is equal to an is right? So I'm just going to type that out. So what exactly do you want to see when city is equal to an is? So first off, I'm going to see, uh, okay, so let's see the back, let's check the background color. And then I'm going to see, let's choose a particular color so we see what exactly is happening. So, okay, click on okay. All right, so this is it. So you can see our row rule is when the city is equal to an acotus, then change the background color to this color. You can see the color code RGB code R is 128, G is zero, and B is 64. All right, so I'm just going to cancel this and run and see what exactly is going to happen. All right, so when I run this, and then I preview this clicking on the browse tool. So it's going to render here. Okay, so let's check the configuration. So we're just going to run this in and then see why are we having Okay, it's supposed to be on the report tab. Okay, so you see, when our city, we renamed our city to my new city, if you remember, and when our city is an Akotes, we're saying to change the color to this. So you can see it has affected just our column, right? And that is a column row. Okay, so for example, let's uh, also say we want to do like a record a row rule, right? Where the city's anacotes wanted to color the rule instead of just that particular column, right? How are we going to achieve that? You're going to go back to the basic table and then you're going to click on city again. And then you go to create role, role, role. Okay. So you can see now uh, we can add this as city row rule. Okay. So, all right. So, when the city is equal to, again, we're going to be using anarchities for the purpose of this demonstration. So what, again, do we want to do? So we're going to say, let's change the text color instead of background color now. So let's change the text color to, uh, let's say, this color, so we can see the difference. And then uh, we can actually change the font size. Let's change the font size to, let's say, 10, right? So, and then we're going to close and then run to see our results, all right? So if we click on the browse still again, we should see our results rendering and our results. So you can see how it has changed the color of the text because we chose the text color and not the background color. So you can see where city is equal to an test. You can see it has changed the text color to the color we choose. Now let's see and change the background color of our city when we have a role, role, right? So instead of 
of course, we're going to just leave the text color like that. And uh, let's choose background color and then choose a particular background color we want. So I'm just going to, uh, for the purpose of this demonstration, so we can see what exactly I'm doing. I might you know, be using odd colors and uh, that's just because I'm demonstrating. All right, so you can see, you can justify the text to the center left all right, so I'm just going to be choosing this right so we see exactly that this is working. All right, so I'm just going to run again and then we see our result. So if I click this, it's render and then we see what is happening. So you can see now that where the city is, um, and not cut is right, you see that we have uh, these colors and this format, right? Now, if you notice something, right? Because we already have a column rule where we say uh, when the city is anacotized, uh, choose this color. And then we have another row rule. And we say when the city is uh, anacotized, use this uh, formatting option, right? But then it's if you are looking at a record like this, and uh, it's not actually present to the eye. It depends on what you want to do, actually. So we can actually override our column rule. And of course, you should know that row rules can override column rule if you want it to override it, right? So um, going back to the basic table configuration, if we click on CC and do edit row rule, you can see a checkbox where you say, this rule should override conflicting per column row. So you can see when we check this, it's going to override the column row. So if we close this and run again, we're going to see our result. Okay. So you can see now exactly. So you can see where my city name is Anacotis, right? You can see we're having uh, a different, a different uh, color which matches the row row color. All right. So. Imagine we want to increase the size of uh, the, the width of the column name or the column. Okay, so what we're going to do is click on, let's say, uh, for example, uh, let's pick two column we're going to be uh, demonstrating. Let's pick the profit and sales column, All right? Imagine I want my sales column to be three times my profit column, right? So I can just come to my sales and profits, and now click on profits, and I'll change the weight to a lesser percentage. And if it's 10%, for example, and I want my sales to be, let's say five times uh, wider than the profits column, I'm going to come here and click 50%, since 10 times five is 50. All right, so if I run this, we're going to check our result and then click on the browse tool. It's rendering, and then we can check the profit and the sales column. So you can see a profit is bigger than uh, the, uh, my sales is bigger than the profit column. So we can actually do a fixed size to make us see that very well. So we click on the profit and then we go to fixed. And let's see, let me see, I want to use 0 0.5 inches. All right, and then for state, we're going to be using 2.5 inches. So 2.5, and then we're going to run this. So if you click on the browse tool again, you should see the results of that. So you can see our sales and our profit column. All right, so just going to come here. So it says, I'm going to give this like 10, okay? Then my profit is this, okay? So I'm going to run this, check again. Okay, so you can see um, what's, what's happening. Is this responding? I'm just going to test that again. So we can understand, let's go for unit price. And then 
crypto fixed point five and then I see shipping cost should be fixed as if for each so unit cost and shopping cost. So I'm gonna click this. So you can see, you can see units price and shopping cost, right? You can see the difference. All right, so after you've formatted your table, now we can actually increase the font size. Let's see, um, let's edit our row rule or our column rule and increase the font size. So I would like to increase the uh, row rule. So you see, uh, Let's so let's say when our city is an is we still want to increase the font size to let's take this up to like 18 and then we'll close this and run. So once you see the roll, you're going to see that the size is going to be increased. So you can see when exactly the city is anarchotis, you can see the size of our row values or number records. All right, so I'm just going to reduce this size because this is, you know, it's written too much. I'm just uh, using this for the demonstration of this uh, class. Okay, so I'm just going to take it to like 12 and then run again. So I'll check in the browse tool, click on the browse tool and you have your rendered results. You can see compare the text font size of this to this so you can see uh what we have so if we want to output uh, our result here to let's say an excel file i want our excel file to maintain this particular uh format right this particular structure all right so what we're going to do is just take it through uh a render tool I, of course you can find the render tool in the reporting tab right so you can see this is the render tool and i'm going to put it here and then we'll see what we have now you can uh, the configuration for the render tool is just uh, basic like this and then you can you know check the output mode for what you want to do and you can have your file saved as a temporary document which you know saves to uh, the, the the Alteryx part you have in your uh, system all right so uh, but I want to actually export this as like a CSV file or an excel file to my own personal uh laptop so all right so i'm going to choose a specific output file right and then when i click this i'm going to hit this button and so i can choose where to save it on my file so i'm just going to save it on the desktop and then i'm going to be uh i'll, I'll rename it as demo file okay so i'm going to be choosing the file format i want and i want an Excel uh, format, all right? So I click on Excel and I click on save and I'm going to run it. All right, so I'm going to check at, I'm going to check user, I'm going to check this directory on my laptop and I know it's uh, directly on my desktop file. So I'm going to look for demo file and open it for you all to see. So you can see this is demo file and I'm going to open this for you to see. Okay, so that is coming up and then we're going to see how that is going to look like. Okay, so let's see, it's coming up very soon. So I hope we all understand how uh, this works now and then I'm going to show you the results when my Excel file is up, all right? So this is it and you can see what we have here, right? So you can see that it's pretty easy and then we have the format of what uh, you know we've done, right? So that's just basically how it works, all right? So um, let me know your thoughts uh, below in the comment section, and I hope this helps, all right? Um, see you next time, and bye for now.